Howdy folks, Nathan here and I am in California and this is the brand new Honda Prologue. This is their first all electric EV for the United States. It's also their first all electric EV SUV. And in this video, we're gonna be doing a few things. We're gonna talk about this vehicle, of course, but we're also gonna talk about the tale of two Hondas. And that's because in order to get to this point, building this vehicle, two things had to happen with Honda because there were two Hondas. Let me explain. Way back in around 1958 in the United States, Honda finally came out here to sell motorcycles. They only had like eight people to sell them. And that was in Los Angeles. My dad actually grew up down the street from where they were selling these things. And that tiny footprint expanded to what Honda is now. About 10 years after that, Honda introduced their N600, which is essentially the predecessor to the Honda Civic little tiny thing that was introduced here in the United States. So then they started building cars 10 years later. Then you're starting to see things like the Accord 10 years later. Then you start to see things like their crossovers 10 years later. You get where I'm going with this, right? So motorcycles, cars, that was really how they got their start. And now EVs, but it's two Hondas. You see on top, it's one Honda. That's their design here in California, by the way. And then underneath, well, that's a General Motors design. It's a skateboard platform, the Ultium platform that you guys have heard about, which is essentially the same underpinnings that go underneath the Chevy Blazer EV. However, very different vehicle. So in this video, we're gonna talk about that, talk about the differences, a little bit of history with Honda, and we're gonna take you around and show you some of the components of this new ride. So what we're looking at here is the Elite version, which is a majority of the vehicles that are here for us to drive. However, this one is unique because what we're looking at here are a lot of goodies that are available through Honda that you can use to gussy up your Prologue. And that is, of course, including the grill and these fender flares. These 19 inch wheels, actually on the Elite model, you've got these 21 inch wheels, which are built in a very like aerodynamic manner to make it, you know, produce less drag. These are very different and they're painted black. Ah, there's more because you have this panel here. This is especially good for my wife because in shopping areas, she hits everything that is not bolted down. And this might actually help out. I know it's sort of off-roady, but that's really, honestly, this would be better in yeah. And then, of course, you've got these little cool little kick plates down there, which are, of course, plastic, but they're made to make it look more roughy tufty, which I guess is part of the deal. And this, very important to mention this, because you have, this is an option. Uh, the thing about roof rails is that they do cut in to your aerodynamics, hence they will change your range. I've got to say, if you look back, if you pull all the way back and look at the overall silhouette of the vehicle. I think it's a really handsome design. This was, by the way, designed in California. That's right. So even though it does share the platform with the Blazer EV, everything on top, the way they put it on there, all of this, all the goodies, it's all Honda. There is only one battery available and that is an 85 kilowatt hour battery. And it's a skateboard platform that sits underneath here. So the battery is all the way down here. And you have the ability for fast charging up to 150 kilowatts. That's right. Now you may be saying to yourself, ah, that's not quite as fast as some of the other competitors out there. And you would be right. Another thing though, and this is an important one for me at least, see this little door right here? <laughs> I like it. Why? Because with the Blazer EV, it has this thing that lifts and lowers. It's extremely slow. It looks really cool but I predict that it'll freeze up in ice and more importantly, it is really slow. So having this is a very simple and effective method of actually getting to your charger. That's a huge thing. Now, overall range, well, let's talk about that. If you get the front wheel drive version of this vehicle, maximum range is 296 miles EPA. Now, if you decide to get the all wheel drive version, which these elites are all all wheel drive, they come standard with all wheel drive, your maximum range is 281 miles. Now, if you get the fully loaded Elite, that drops to 273 miles. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because at least at the 293 miles, that's the front wheel drive model, which we will not be able to test while we are here. But 
That is also where your entry level pricing comes in. And that is obviously where everything begins. Here's an interesting point though. Even though they do share the same platform, the GM version of this, or the Blazer, that one is available with all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. This one is all wheel drive or front wheel drive. Interesting mix. Bet you're curious about what's under the hood. I just found out it's a double pull, like BMW. Ah, there we go. Look at that. So the front wheel drive model puts out 212 horsepower, 236 pound feet of torque. And you may have noticed no frunk. Well, there's a pretty good reason if you look and see what's in there. Now, if you get the all wheel drive version, it's 288 horsepower, 333 pound feet of torque. Interesting that they would have this type of setup because modern EVs in many cases are lauded based on whether or not they have a frunk, but they compensate with that by having decent cargo space, which we're gonna go over in just a minute. So this is also an Elite, but this isn't the one with all the extra goodies on it. That one kind of as a showcase for things that you can buy through Honda. This one, not so much. 25.2 cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row. There's only two rows in this thing, despite the fact that it has a massive wheelbase. But there's also this, and there's extra storage in here. I believe that's over five cubic feet of cargo space in there, which is a great place to put, you know, various things like chargers and whatnot. Now, what if you want to put down the seats? Now, these seats don't do anything special, so they don't slide back and forth. They don't recline or anything. And the reason why, you should be able to see it. Whoop right here see that that's the reason why however once you get both seats down you have 57.7 cubic feet of cargo space now that is right in the mix of things so it is a roomy vehicle but there are some that have larger interiors and there are many that have smaller interiors so it's kind of in between them i find it fascinating that you know the second row doesn't really have a whole lot going on in terms of seat movement, despite the fact that you have that flat skateboard floor. But in terms of interior design, which we're about to look at, that is pretty much all Honda. All right, let's get in here. Now, first of all, something I wanna point out, I really do like the two-tone interior that we have here. And there are some options in terms of interior colors and designs, but what's important here, for those of you who are like, okay, what about General Motors, da, 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 da. Okay, General Motors doesn't offer wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, but Honda does. Yay! Okay, so this is an 11 inch screen and this is 11.3 inch screen. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, both wireless. Yes, you can get that with this vehicle, unlike its GM sibling. In addition, I wanna point this out because I love this. Buttons, real buttons in an electric vehicle. Who would have thought? This is great. These turn and they have a nice click to them for your dual climate. That's great. Now, you have more. Ah, because, yep, little thing, USB-C's over here. And this is your phone charger. You just pop your phone right in there to charge it. You don't have to hit any buttons or anything else. As long as you put the phone in the right direction, it actually shows you what to do right there. All right, and then there's a little bit of storage. Left compartment, pretty much standard size, I'd say. And then you've got this right here. Yep, decent amount of storage room in there. Not a whole lot going on though. You do have a dual pane sunroof, which is really cool. Um, it's kind of a standard operating procedure on these types of vehicles, you know what I mean? So it's at the very least, at least they did that. Uh, material quality, it's not too bad. Pretty much up there with other Hondas that are out there. In fact, the design here, this little bar going across, which I pointed out before, um, this is very reminiscent of other Honda vehicles that are out there, like the CRV and even the Accord and whatnot. Even though they don't have the honeycomb thing going on here, they do have this design element. And soft touch materials here, which, helps quite a bit um same here on the door panel in fact if you look at the door panel you'll see that there is room for bottles in the door 
once again, typical. Another thing that you may have missed, though, is storage down here. You don't have a transmission tunnel you have to really worry about, so you do have additional storage down there. Ah, let's try the back seat. Now, I'm sitting behind myself. I'm 6'1". Yeah, legroom is tons of legroom. Headroom is tight. I'll be honest with you. My head is touching when I lean back. Uh, fortunately, I slouch, so it's not that big of a deal. As I said before, these seats do not recline or slide back and forth. So keep that in mind. But width-wise, well, check it out. This thing is five inches wider than a Honda CRV. <laughs> you can really feel it in terms of shoulder width. Roman and I and Andre could probably sit back here comfortably shoulder-wise, although because those two are stupid tall, their heads would probably be bumping into the roof, which is why they have to lean forward where this roof section is here and they would be fine. Okay, not a whole lot going on back here. However, you do have air vents that are movable, USB-Cs, and of course, you're able to plug in there as well. But there's more because you have a folding armrest with cup holders. Yeah. Now, remember I was talking about how, yes, indeed, there are components here that come directly from General Motors. Well, this isn't the first time that Honda's done that. As a matter of fact, whenever they've had a need for a particular type of vehicle, it's not beyond them to go and get it. Let me give you an example. Way back, Isuzu built a vehicle called the Rodeo. Honda needed an off-road vehicle. They didn't have anything to compete at the time. So the original Honda Passport was that. Acura needed an off-roader as well, and they went to Isuzu and took the Trooper and renamed it. They even did that with minivans. So it's not beyond them to rebadge vehicles. And that's just here in the United States, not worldwide. Man, that's totally different. So keep that in mind when you're talking about the fact that, yes, they do share some components with General Motors. Pricing starts for the front wheel drive base model just under $49,000. Add about $3,000 to that if you want to get the all wheel drive version. Battery size is the same throughout. 150 kilowatt maximum charging throughout. All of that is standard. The bottom line is, and many of you are probably asking, why is that pricing up here when some of their competitors are a bit lower? And many are. Well, part of that has to do with the fact that Honda is touting the fact that they have the best range, at least with the front wheel drive version, in its class. And the class is a little bit fuzzy because if you look at this, this is a much larger vehicle than say the Mustang Mach-E. At the same time, it's a very different type of shape and a different type of audience in my book than the Ionic 5. So it's sort of in this unusual spot. Also the Ionic 5 charges much faster, potentially, and the Mustang is a faster, more powerful vehicle. So all of these things have to be taken into account. Now, whether or not this is going to be eligible for federal tax credit has yet to be decided. They're working on it right now and they're trying to make it happen. I suspect they will eventually, but there are other tax credits, of course, available. So stay tuned because in the very near future, you're going to be seeing our full drive video where we're taking one of these around the beautiful mountain roads of California. I'll see you next time.